Hey, 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 Sonia Videsi here from Success Fitness. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're gonna do a killer arm and leg circuit. So what we need is a skipping rope. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. You don't have to use it. You can just skip it in place and pretend. We're gonna need a couple sets of dumbbells. Again, if you do not have dumbbells, you can use your soup cans, your water bottles, or look around your house and see what else you can find. Make sure you have your water and make sure you're fueled well so that we have all the energy we need in the next 45 minutes to get this workout completed with your full capacity, yes? All right, so we're gonna start nice and easy. We're gonna jog on a spot. We're gonna do a one minute jog, then we're gonna go into a one minute jumping jack, then we're gonna go into a one minute skater, so laterally jumping it. We're gonna jump into some skipping and some hip rotations and some arm rotations, and then that gives us our five minute sort of starting point just to get the body moving and get now brain focused on the work to come. Yes, you're with me, right? All right, so keep jogging out on the spot. If at any point something doesn't feel comfortable, um, you feel any discomfort or pain, please stop, right? We don't wanna work through pain or discomfort, um, but if you don't feel any of that, and you're just simply counting when I just don't feel, feel like it today, then I do want you to push just a little bit harder. All right, because we can. It's amazing what the mind can do. And four, three, two, let's hold it right here. So we have a level one jumping jack. If that is not your level and you want to push it a little bit harder right off the bat, let's come on up. Now the whole point here with the warm up is to get the heart rate going, is to get the pumping of the heart, which means that the blub, blub, the blood is moving around the body and we're gonna warm up a little bit and preparing our joints, knees, hips, ankles, shoulders, elbows, all that good stuff um, to move, right? So that's why we wanna do the warm up and not just jump straight into um, full on exercises. And mostly I find, um, depending on where your weaknesses are, and let's say you had knee type issues or back issues, Sometimes it needs a little bit like that five minutes to get moving. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, that feels a little bit better. Keep going. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. We're going to hold it right here. And we're going to do a little speed skater. So all I want you to do is hopping it laterally side to side. Okay. Pressing it out. Pressing it out. And again, none of this has to be crazy vigorous. The whole point again of this is just to warm the body up. All right, let's go. How's your week been? I hope you had a really good few sunny, nice few sunny days. Um, the weather sure has been nice and uh, it's hopefully gonna stay a little bit like that, right? So we can enjoy the beautiful outdoors and press but even when it's not 25 degrees out it's still beautiful right no matter where you live get some fresh air five four three two and time let's grab your skipping rope and again if you don't have one do not worry we don't need to use it we can just pretend right and the great thing about pretending skipping is that you're not going to be tripping over your skipping rope ready Let's go. Stay nice and light on your feet if you are using a rope. And skipping is truly just practice, okay? If I'm talking and doing this, I trip. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Seems to be the theme these days. 30 seconds. I'm obviously not skipping enough. I used to skip quite a bit. Fifteen more seconds. Last four. Three. Two and time. Skipping rope just to the side. And we're gonna do some nice little hip openers. We're gonna open it up. 
and opening it up. Good. Just alternating. So if you're kind of contemplating to get a skipping rope, I highly recommend it because the calories you burn, the results you're getting from skipping are twice as much as jogging outside, right? If you're going for um, a 15, 20 minute run, it's equivalent to like 10 minutes of skipping. So you actually can half your time. But again, it's not only that, but it does make your workouts, um, gives you a lot more variety, right? Give me one more, last one. Hold it right here. And let's do some nice big arm circles. Forward, go, 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 15 seconds. And then we're gonna go backwards for 15 seconds. Right, do you feel a little warmer, right? Like lightly keep my feet moving here and let's go backwards. I don't just abruptly stop, right? Nice and controlled. <sighs> Feels so good. Go, go, go. All right, so the warm up, if you, let's say, this little segment that we just did jumping jacks, jogging, skipping, skaters you could make this a whole workout on its own. Like, do that four or five times through. You're going to be working for 20 minutes and you get a nice little cardio workout. In four, three, to shake it out. Let's get both hands behind, open up the chest here a little bit. And again, notice I keep moving my feet around. It's not because I'm antsy. It's um, to keep my heart rate in check, not just stopping um, and just abruptly standing on one spot, okay? And then shake it out. Give yourself a nice deep breath. Exhale out. <sighs> one more time, deep breath in and exhale out good all right we're gonna start with narrow squats with a dumbbell um overhead press so when we're doing anything overhead we don't want to go crazy heavy especially on your first set so we're gonna do them three sets through three exercises so i'm gonna start with my little five pound dumbbell and I can guarantee it will get a little harder. We're gonna do a narrow squat. So I wanna stand a little bit more underneath my hip joints versus right out here. Okay, so we're gonna hold it right here. We're gonna squat it down. Down we go, coming up, curl, press, and release. Are you ready? And go. So squat, curl and press, and release. Squat, curl and press, and release, good. So you can gauge here how much heavier you like to go. So if you do have the ability to go a little heavier, or a little lighter because you have different dumbbells, definitely go for it. If you are in the process of getting, getting more free weights or perhaps you are getting a band and you wanna know more about how to use the band, let me know. Um, but anyways, having that said, the band can replace quite a bit of different exercises like these or others, right? So it becomes a great tool that doesn't take up a lot of room. And push, good work, keep going. You got 10 more seconds. Exhale out and press, awesome job. Give me one more of these. Curl and press and release, good. We're gonna release those dumbbells to the side. We're gonna come down into a plank position. I prefer being on my knees here so that I keep my back nice and safe. And we're gonna alternate dumbbell rows. Okay, ready? Let's go. Alternating dumbbell rows in a semi-plank position. If this is too easy, let's get those knees off the ground and rotating into the one-arm row. Now the key here is not to twist too much through the hips, okay? If that's too much of having one hand on the dumbbell, you can also just keep the dumbbell in the center and then alternate it with your hands because sometimes people's hands get sore on being in that position. Give me 30 more seconds. Good. Exhale out and press. Exhale out and press. Good work. Breathing out, keeping that core tight. Try not to twist my hips. I'm not square here. You can, right? But that's a lot easier versus being here in that semi-plank position, and then the next level is to come right up on your toes. And time, good. We're gonna come all the way up, keep one of your dumbbells, and we're gonna do some lateral lunges. So I keep my dumbbell right in front of my chest 
holding it goblet style. And we're gonna laterally lunges, right, left, alternating for one minute. Ready? Let's go. So when I'm laterally lunging, I wanna get that nice stretch in. So my extended leg and my adductors, those inner thighs, are stretching and then my bend leg is powering me back to the center. Okay, and push. Inhale, exhale, pressing it up. And power, we got this. And power. Inhale, pressing it up. 30 more seconds and push. Good work. So we're gonna, this is our third one um, of our three exercises. And then we're gonna go back to the first one, which is our squat with an overhead press. I, ha I happen to add that little bicep curl in there, but we're actually gonna take it out on this set. So I can be able to um, just go do an overhead press. You'll see the difference. Four, three, two, and time. So what I mean with that, let's go back with the narrow squat. So instead of doing a curl and press, we're gonna stay right here. I'm gonna squat and press right up. And it's a little bit harder. Ready, set, and go. So we're gonna squat, power it up. Squat, power it up, yeah? Squat, power it up. So I'm using my momentum on the way up to give those shoulders a press up. Good, down. Power it up. Awesome. Down. Power it up. Whew. Down and press. Whew. Right? Because the curl gives it a little bit of that momentum. And this way, my legs and shoulders have to work a little harder. And power. Good. And power. 15 more seconds. And again, good, so close. Power it up, your knees don't go past your toes. And time. We're gonna go back to your renegade rows or plank, alternating rows, whatever you wanna name them. So long you're in a plank and you're rowing it, leading with your elbow. Ready, set, and go. Think about those back muscles doing the work. So I'm not rushing through this. I really want to make sure that my back is working hard and my core is stabilizing the whole time. Awesome. Good. We love working out with weights, don't we? I do. It's very empowering. But also, when we're doing resistance, type training, not just cardio type training. It changes our body, the way it looks. We can mold it like putty, right? So the way we do that though, we need to be challenged by the weights, right? So if you just have one pound, two pound dumbbells and you don't have any injuries to get through, then you can probably go a little heavier and focus on building up a little bit more of the toning, the muscles and time. All right, keep one of your dumbbells. Back to your lateral lunges, alternating. Um, if we go too light and not challenging your body, getting not getting into that uncomfortable, um, our body won't change. Ready? And go. Stretching into it, pressing it up. Stretching into it, and up. Good, keeping that torso nice and upright, keeping the chest lifted, and press. Down and press, you're doing awesome. Down, lifting it up. Excellent work. And push, you got this. 30 more seconds. Good work, 20 more seconds. We got this, right? Now we're warm. 15 minutes in, we've warmed right up. And push, 10 more seconds. So if you have a jug, something heavy, a bag of flour, and push. All right, narrow squat, overhead press, 
hands on your shoulders, not make, making sure that we're not going past your toes with your knees. Ready and go. Power it up. Right? So a big bag of something with weight in it could be a backpack on your back. Can add nicely for squats. Right? And then have those water bottles in your hands for the overhead press. Right? Whatever it takes to add some resistance. Just remember your legs can handle quite a bit more than your shoulders. Right? So these five pound dumbbells are not necessarily giving me the challenge for my legs, but they're giving me the challenge for the shoulders. So if I want to make this a little harder, I'm gonna add weight to my body by having a weighted vest, uh, backpack, right? Something like that. Good, down in power. Give me 15 more seconds. Good, down and press. You got this. Four, three, two, and time. Good. Back to the plank. On your knees, on your toes, on all fours, right? Into that semi plank position if you can. In four, three, two, and go. Really focusing on my back here, getting that nice range in. So if your posture needs a little bit of work, this is a great workout to do as well. And pull, and pull. Good work. Exhale out, squeezing it up. 30 more seconds. Keep that core tight. Ten more seconds. Four, three, two, and time. Come on up. Lateral lunges. Hanging onto the weight. Just be careful when we're down on the floor for a bit. And coming off the ground. Don't get up too quickly. You're going to get dizzy. Ready? And go. Stepping into it. Are you sweating yet? I am sweating. Already and press. Feels so good though, doesn't it? I love to sweat and it's kind of gross. <laughs> I know, but I love sweating because I know I'm doing something, right? It's like sweat is fat crying. <laughs> help me, help me and press. Come on, stay in the heels. Don't get those knees going past your toes, right? If this bothers your knees, really take a look at your technique and power. And power. You got this. And press. Oh yeah. And push. Come on. The thing is when we're doing legs and arms, it's our upper body and lower body combined. Lots of ab work. It's great. And time. Good. Let's grab some water. We're gonna move on from these three exercises and we're gonna do some new ones. There you go, okay. We're gonna do plies with lateral raises. So plies meaning your toes are as far out as we can. We'll go too narrow. Your knees are gonna go past your toes. That might be okay, okay for um, um, Pilates, but for today when we're using resistance, we don't want your knees to go past your toes. We're gonna have dumbbells in front of us. So when we come back up, we're gonna add a lateral raise to that. From there, we're going to go into reverse lunges with a bicep curl. Hands us why I took that bicep curl out when we did that overhead press. Uh -huh. And then from there, we're going to do a squat down with a front raise. And then we're going to go into mountain climbers. So if you need a chair for mountain climbers, I'm just prepping you here. Then grab your chair, right, to be more elevated. Completely up to you. So let's start with your plie lateral raises. So toes are out to the sides, dumbbells to the front, shoulders down and back, good posture in four, three, two, let's go. Down plie, lateral raise. Down plie, 
lateral raise. My dumbbells are in front of my hips for a reason. If they're beside my hips, for one, they're in the way for the plie, but also this aligns them nicely with the shoulders. So anytime we do lateral raises, always start in front of the hips. And again, good, breathing out. Stay in your heels, right? Notice my knees, don't go past your toes, right? And the more out I go with my toes, the harder I gotta press into those adductors, those inner thighs, right? I wanna work them all, awesome work. And again, 15 more seconds. Good. And lift. Whew. And again, lift. Five, four, three, two, and time. All right. Reverse lunges into a bicep curl. We're going to alternate right, left. Again, grab a heavier weight, lighter weight, or maintain with the same one that you were just using. And go. So we're gonna curl both arms. Every time we step back, notice I bent my leg in the back, right? It's not just a stretch off that back leg. Good work. Turning my hands. Notice how I turn them, right, to the shoulder, and then I go beside my hips, right? So it's not just a hammer curl this way. I'm turning them in, so I get my full bicep working. 20 more seconds. Good, 15 seconds. Come on. Five, four, three, two, and time. Squats, front raises, okay? So now, early with narrow, we're gonna go a little bit wider. We're gonna go down, and we're gonna do both arms, front raise, yeah? And go. Squat, front raise. Well, I'm doing that squat, and then into my front raise, I'm not locking my knees out. So I'm keeping them just so subtly, slightly softened, okay? I don't wanna lock them right out and then that gets me to swing, okay? So nice and controlled, awesome. Down and lift, good. Down and lift, down and lift. We got this, down and lift, down, 15 seconds. And notice my breath is a little, a little heavier here now, right, because I'm combining my lower and upper body like this. So the heart rate comes up, blood's flowing everywhere. My body's going, what's going on? And time. We're gonna go right into our mountain climbers. So hands down to the ground, plank position pulling the knees in. We're not gonna go crazy fast here. Okay, so it's more about strength today. In four, three, two, and go. Pull, pull. So really concentrating on my core, don't stop. We wanna make sure our knee, our hands, right? I'm just explaining this while you're moving, right? My hand's gonna stay right underneath my shoulders. What I see a lot of times happening is this. The body starts creeping away and we're wondering why we feel this just in the shoulders and not in our core. So our hands need to stay right above or right underneath your shoulders. Yeah? We got this. 10 seconds. And time. Good work, how was that? Round one done. Back to your plie, lateral raises. Love shoulders. They always look so great in a tank top, right? Toes are out, shoulders down and back. Hands to the front of the hips, ready? Plie, down and lateral. Down 
and lateral. So depending on your body shape, if you are more pear-shaped or apple-shaped, right? If you're more pear-shaped where you have a lot of um, your strength coming from the lower body, so we got more thigh muscles, booty, then shoulders, when we develop them and sculpt them, are great because they will balance everything out a little bit more, right? So again, we can sculpt the body with weights to how I want the body to look. Yes, it's patience. Yes, it takes time. And yes, it's education. But anybody can do it. Good, 15 seconds. And again. Good, 10 seconds. And press. We got this. And again, four, three, two, and time. Good, shake it out. Reverse lunges, bicep curls, yes? And five, I'm gonna give you 15 seconds in between here. We are lengthening each exercise to a minute today. Ready and go. So what I mean with that is usually we do like a 45 second um, set or we do a 50 second set, but today we're gonna do a one minute. And that makes a huge difference as you probably notice. It's like, whew, that seems like a long time. And pull. Good. Bend that back leg. Good. Exhale out, curling those arms to your shoulders. And press 30 more seconds. Exhale out. And lift. We got this. Oh, yeah. And press. 15 seconds. 10 more seconds. Come on. Don't let it go now. Five, four, three, two, and time. A little wider squat with your front raises. Whew. Definitely sweating. It's running down my nose. Disgusting. In five, four, three, two, and go. Squat. Yeah? Squat. Right? So I'm really trying to control both moves. Whew. Down and lift. Awesome. Down and lift. Inhale, exhale out. Pressing it up. And push. We so got this. Oh, yes. Good. 20 more seconds. And again, squats, lunges, plies. You'll hear me say it all the time. Ladder lunges. Don't get those knees past your toes. Super important. We don't want no knee pain or discomfort. Five more seconds. Four, three, two, and mountain climbers. Down we go. This is the end of your second round. We got one more round to go after this. And I'm moving on. Yeah? Ready? In four, three, two, and go. My back stays nice and flat. Hands underneath your shoulders. Yes? And no twisting from the hips. But if you do want to do more of a diagonal, you can switch it up a little bit and get your knee going towards the opposite elbow. Don't stop. Um, when we do that, there's a little bit more rocking of the hips, so just be careful. If you're choosing to go fast, that's fine, but just remember that that is bringing up the cardio more, which is fine, it's not wrong, and we are in a plank position, but we're not really truly focusing on the technique of that move, right? So it's not wrong, and it's not, you're not gonna get hurt, it's just two different versions of the mountain climber, okay? So fast or slow, but depending on what we're after, right? Center, nice and stable, yeah? So if you have back type issues, then this might be your best option versus twisting into it and bothering that SI joint too much. Having that said, functionally, we wanna start doing that. So maybe if you are recovering from something, doing a little bit of each, yes? We're almost there, five more seconds. Four, three, two, and time, all right. Come on up, last round, back to your plie. 
lateral raises. Toes are out to the sides, yes? You're with me, right? Hands to the front in four, three, two, and go. Plie. Out of shoulders. They're feeling fantastic, right? Good. So what do you have for breakfast? Um, breakfast, we used to um, say, and we still do, it's meal for the champions, right? It's you fueling for the day. Um, but there's different reasons why I would put one of my clients on intermittent fasting, where maybe we're not doing the early morning breakfast and we only have a window of eating. Um, or some people skip breakfast a couple times per week. And the honest truth is, um, I have tried it all different ways with my own body. And the honest truth is, I haven't really um, found a negative side effect if I were to skip breakfast today. Having that said, one of the negative side effects, one more, would be bicep curls, reverse lunges, that I may not have as much energy. So in my field, my line of work, I need to move a lot, right? So if I don't have the fuel to do that, in four, three, two, and go. So if I don't have the fuel to move, well, how am I gonna teach all these classes and then recover and do it again, right? So sometimes I teach and record maybe two, three classes a day, right? So that's a lot of exercises. So my body needs that time because if I wouldn't, wouldn't give it time and feel to recover, then I'm gonna get injured very quickly. And press. So you really, it's an individual thing. I can't give you one right answer when it comes to nutrition. Um, usually what I suggest with my clients is give me sort of an idea on what your week looks like, your activity level, your nutrition currently, and then maybe see what's not working and a couple of things that we can change in that current plan. Some people prefer starting from complete scratch and go, you know what, just give me a 30 day meal plan. Give me a healthy meal plan because mine not looking so good. Be honest with yourself. Four, three, two, and time. And that's half the battle. Be honest. Nobody's judging, right? Especially me. I'm just here to help you. Feet go a little wider in four, three, two, and go. Squat and front raise. And again, squat and front raise. You got this. Squat. Oh dear. I got sweat running into my eyes. When my daughter was little, because you know, your tears are salty, your sweat salty, and you got sweat running into your eyes. Let's say you have sunscreen on your face. <laughs> Doesn't feel so good. So my daughter used to say, my eyes are bleeding. <laughs> Pretty funny. It's not funny because the visual of that is not funny, but having your little four-year-old blurt that out is funny. Anything a four-year-old blurts out to me is funny. And press. What's your favorite age of little ones? I think mine got to be like between three and eight, somewhere in there. They're pretty damn cute. One more. And time. Good. Mountain climbers, right? They're discovering themselves and they're pushing boundaries. Mountain climbers, ready, set, and go. And not that boundary pushing is uh, pleasant for a parent. Don't stop, keep going. But uh, now in hindsight, my daughter's 18. In hindsight, uh, you kind of miss that time, but you also, you look at how they're developed and what the outcome is, and you're kind of going, well, I think I did an okay job. <laughs> I did the best I could. How is that? <sighs> With the tool I had. tools I had, right? <sighs> because we can only be as good of parents as we know to be to what we've been taught, right? And then we either make some changes to how we uh, discover parenting, um, or we follow some of those same guidelines because it worked for us 15 seconds, right? So our parents... Um, also worked only with the tools that they had. 10 more seconds. So yes, we can blame them for many things, but we really shouldn't. It's a tough job. One more. And time. Woo. All right, enough of parenting. Um, 
we are going to move on. Have some water. We're going to do dumbbell kickbacks. Yes. Bend over. We're going to go into deadlifts, hammer curls, overhead press. Hands this again. Why earlier I changed that, right? Because we did just hammer uh, overhead press. Then we just that just the curl. And now we're going to combine the two. Hands this why today is legs and arms. All right. So we can do this with a lighter, heavier weight. You choose. You can switch at any point. In five, four, three, two, and go. Deadlift, curl and press. Yes. And again, deadlift, curl and press. And again. Now when I'm doing my deadlift, my back is completely flat. Yes. I'm putting all my weight in my heels, not putting any pressure or really minimal pressure on my lower back. If you feel this too much in the lower back, soften those knees a little bit more into that deadlift. Okay. And back. Good job. Ah, curl and press. So got this. Yes. Down and press. We got 20 more seconds. Come on. We want to feel the stretch in the back of those legs, your hamstrings. I love deadlift. And I have a chronic back pain. You know that about me. If you don't, well, here you go. I got chronic back pain. And deadlifts you would think would be bothering me, but they do not because I practice them on a regular basis. And time. Good. We're going to hold it right here. Elbows tucked in. And we're going to go right into dumbbell kickbacks. Shoulders down and back, hinging from the hips. Ready, set, and go. So now I'm not hinging too far, right? Because I don't want to be here after my deadlift because my back has already done some work. So now I'm coming up a little bit higher, right? If this still bothers your back, you can come up a little bit higher yet, but make sure your elbows go behind your ribcage. So we're not here, right? Because that's not going to work for those triceps. They do need to sit a little higher. Good. Give me 30 more seconds. Keep it controlled. Whew. The sweat pouring off my nose. 20 more seconds. 15 seconds. We got this. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and time. We're going to lay on your back. Bicycle crunches. We have a level one right here. We have a level two right here. In five, four, three, two, and go. Do we have a level three? Yes, we do. Yeah? So which one are you? Okay? So again, all these classes can be modified. It's really important that you learn your modifications and don't get discouraged. Okay? So if you do a class and the next day you're muscular sore, um, that's a good thing, but not if you can barely move and you can't sit down, right? So but sometimes that happens when we haven't been exercising for a while and we come back to it. So it's really important that you stay patient with your body. It will adapt fairly quickly. And that's why I keep telling people to change their workouts because it adapts quickly. It also plateaus quickly. Four, three, two, and time. Up we go. Deadlifts, bicep curls, overhead press. We'll come up too quickly. Feet together. Shoulders down and back in four, three, two, and go. Deadlift, curl and press. Yes, and again. Deadlift, curl and press. So much information. Yeah? Well, my goal is to not only train you or work out with you, my goal is for you to understand why, and my goal is to educate. I am an educator. I'm a BCRP trainer of fitness leaders, which means that I'm part of BCRPA's team of trainers 
that educates and gets personal trainers, group fitness instructors, aqua fitness instructors, all certified and up to date with information and getting their certification credits to stay current. Right, so I'm an educator. I love teaching things to people, right? If I know it matters to them. And so some of you might tune me out and that's okay. Elbows tucked in and you're more than welcome to crank your music, right? And totally tune me out and go ship zip it, Sonia. All right, elbows tucked in, ready, set and go. I just can't help myself and press and pushing it back. Good, think about the back of the arms working those triceps. I love working triceps because we can feel them working, right? With some muscles we kind of go, I don't know where I'm supposed to feel this. We know where you're supposed to feel this one. You can see this one working. Definitely feel it the next day. And again, squeezing it back. Come on, 30 more seconds. So close people, so close. When your hands are sweaty, yeah? So if you, if you and when you, and or maybe you already are back into the gym and you find it frustrating when your hands get all sweaty, wear gloves, right? Gloves give you a very better grip. Five, four, three, two, bicycle crunches. Come on down on your mat. Find your level of bicycle crunches. Have you found your level? Ready? In five, four, three, two, let's go. Right, so even when you do this level one bicycle crunch, what you wanna think about is shoulder to knee and really getting that curl in, yeah? Right, so sometimes level one I find is the only reason I'm going back there sometimes is because I really wanna engage um, and remind my muscles on how to do it, right? Because sometimes here, we're using a lot of momentum, right? Not saying that this is not harder, it is definitely harder. And push, but just reminding your body, just sort of firing those muscles up before you go into this level. And press, so sometimes the last first few seconds and then jumping right into this one. 15 more seconds, let's go. Come on, you got this, 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and time. One more round, people, people, and then we get to stretch it and you are done. You did a great job. You're still doing a great job. Should be proud of you for being here, yeah? Always be proud of yourself for moving. Ready and go. Deadlift, hammer curl, overhead press, and again, deadlift. Whew. Curl and press and release. Good. Deadlift. Exhale out and release. Down we go. And press and release. Good. Deadlift. Curl and press and release. Good. Down. Curl and press and release. Good job. Come on. We can do this. 20 more seconds is your last round. Make it a gooder. And curl and press. And release. So close. Curl and press. 10 more seconds. And release. Yes. Five, four, three, two, and time. Tricep kickbacks. So again, hinging slightly from the hip. Elbows come up a little higher than that rib cage, and we're gonna kick it back in four, three, two, and go. How did you do? How are those arms feeling? Are they tired? Are they shaky? Can you do more? So this is a good workout where you could do some cardio before or after. So if you have an exercise bike or elliptical or treadmill at home, 
right? You can add that to the equation before or after, or you can go for a run outside. So if you're doing this early in the morning, you can go first for a run, especially when it's warm outside, hydrate, fuel, come to this kind of class. Yes, 10 more seconds, come on. You got this. Five more seconds, four, three, two, and time. Bicycle crunches. Whoo! Ah, oh, so close. Always, you know, when you get to the end like this, you're like, yes, yes, I did it. In four, three, two, and go. Awesome work. Come on. So got this. Yes, yes. Come on, make those core muscles work. 30 seconds. Lift from the shoulder. We're not just twisting. We're rotating and then lifting into that bend. Knee. Yes, we are. Go, go. Oh, yes. Come on. 10 more seconds. Oh, 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 oh. Four, three, two, and time. Yes, you did. Congratulations. You sweated. You worked it. Let's keep your feet together, knees together. Just drop those knees to one side. Keep your shoulders on the floor, stretching through the lower back. And I cannot mention this enough. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Um, really work on that flexibility of yours. And um, with extra flexibility comes strength. With extra strength comes tightness. So those two go hand in hand. Let's switch over to the other side. Um, so it's really important that you stretch before, after, before, you know, because we have the cooler muscles. So I'm not necessarily suggesting a deep stretch. I'm talking more like dynamic stretches where we do a little bit of mobility, like rotating those arms, stuff like that. Um, opening those hips, right? What we did today for the warm up. Um, but afterwards, definitely take the time. We're gonna pull both knees into your chest. Give yourself a gentle rock side to side, massaging through that lower back, right? Thanking the lower back. It's like, you did a fantastic job. Whew, good work. We're going to come up into a seated position. We're going to take the bottoms of your feet together and leaning gently into it, getting a nice stretch in those inner thighs, those adductors, maybe a little bit in your hips, depending on how flexible you are. Whew, breathing into it. Good job. We're going to cross those legs. And we're gonna to rotate to the outside, keeping your torso nice and upright, looking over your shoulders. Awesome, let's take it to the other side. Great work, right? And also what the stretching does, it will sort of sim us down a little bit to so get the heart rate down. Let's come up nice and slow, not too quickly. We're gonna grab one leg behind, opening up your shoulder at the same time, get that Bend leg a little bit more behind that standing leg, squeezing your butt cheeks, getting a little deeper stretch in there. All right, if this is too hard to grab your foot, put your foot on a chair and release, taking it over to the other side. All right, so the key to these classes too is um, cranking some music on your end. Um, sometimes for me on my end, it's difficult um, because it kind of interferes with me teaching um, and also there's lots of copyright with music. So we gotta be very careful unless we wanna listen to the same tunes over and over and over. So it's probably better if you just crank your own tunes. And especially when you've been with me long enough, hands behind, you see me doing an activity, you kind of go, oh, I know what she's talking about. And you know your technique, you know your form, you're just literally just following along, right? So there's no reason that you can sort of tune me out more and tune the music in more because music is 100% motivating, not gonna lie. Really changes your mood and gets you into things, right? So I'm not going to blame you if you tune me out. All right, 
So thanks for joining me. My name is Sonia Badezi from Success Fitness. I'll be seeing you for the next class. Thank you, Royal Ropes, for sponsoring this class. And I will be seeing you in the next few days for more classes to come. Have a fantastic day.